Life is dependent on diffusion. Without it, cells, tissues, organs, and organisms would not survive. In humans, an important example of diffusion is the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the blood and the cells. For this example, let's focus on oxygen. Every cell in the body needs oxygen in order to make energy. We breathe in air. Oxygen in the air is carried by the organs of our respiratory tract to the small air sacs in the lung. In the air sac, oxygen is high in concentration and will move into the blood and then carried away by red blood cells. In the blood, oxygen is low in concentration and the movement of oxygen from the air sac to the blood is diffusion. At the cells, oxygen is high in concentration in the blood and will move from the blood into the tissues by diffusion. So let's break down diffusion into simpler examples to better understand the process. We'll start with how diffusion works. Molecules dissolved in a solution are in constant random motion due to their kinetic energy. One result of this motion is that dissolved molecules become evenly distributed throughout the solution. This tendency of molecules to spread out is an example of diffusion. But how do these molecules come to be evenly distributed? Let's start with a beaker of plain water. What will happen if we now add a lump of sugar to the water? A lump of sugar is composed of many individual sugar molecules, and even as a solid lump, the individual sugar molecules are in motion. When the lump is dropped into the water, it begins to dissolve. Individual sugar molecules move randomly and constantly from the area where they are common to the area where they are scarce. This type of motion, when molecules move from areas of their higher concentration to areas of their lower concentration, is called diffusion. Diffusion continues until all the sugar molecules become evenly dispersed throughout the beaker. The rate of diffusion is affected by temperature, size of molecules, and the steepness of the concentration gradient. Although not specifically shown in this animation, this is one of the processes whereby materials are exchanged between a cell and its environment. Hi everyone. Watching dye diffuse through water is a simple way to demonstrate diffusion. Over time, the dye molecules will distribute themselves throughout the liquid. The dye will move from an area where it's high in concentration to where it is low in concentration until it's equally distributed throughout the liquid. If we break it down, a drop of dye is placed in water. The dye molecules diffuse into the water, the water molecules will diffuse into the dye, both moving from areas where they're high in concentration to where they're low, and then ultimately both the dye and the water will be equally distributed. This equal distribution of the molecules throughout the available space is referred to as equilibrium. Diffusion across a semi-permeable membrane, like the plasma membrane, is called passive transport and requires no ATP energy. Oxygen and carbon dioxide move into and out of the cell by passive transport. Okay, let's imagine we have a beaker of solution and we've placed a semi-permeable membrane down the center. This membrane is like a dialysis membrane. It has pores in it. Then we're going to put some green particles on one side of that membrane and those particles are small enough to pass through the pores of our semipermeable membrane. If this is so, then we should see those green particles move across the membrane down a concentration gradient as in passive transport. Closing in on one part of the membrane, we can see the molecules move across the membrane down the concentration gradient. You can think of the concentration gradient in terms of the number of particles. In the first figure on the left, we start with 16 particles on the left side of the membrane and zero on the right. This is 
the concentration difference or gradient across the membrane. As passive diffusion proceeds, we see 12 particles now on the left and 4 on the right. The concentration difference is decreasing as the molecules move to reach equilibrium. In the third figure, we see equilibrium. 8 particles on the left and 8 particles on the right. If we add a second diparticle on the other side of the membrane, both dimolecules will move along their individual concentration gradients to reach equilibrium. Now let's have some fun with the animation. So we have orange and blue balls on each side of the yellow strip down the middle. We're going to call that strip a membrane. So I've checked that and at this moment the membrane is not permeable to either of the balls. So they're staying on each side of the membrane. They're moving around, they're distributing equally within each of those spaces, but they're not able to cross the membrane at this time. If these are going to diffuse across the membrane, then they'll move from an area where they're high in concentration to an area where they're low and ultimately they'll fill the available space. So let's do that with just the blue balls. Now the blue balls can cross the membrane and over time we can see a more equal distribution of blue balls across that membrane. They're moving in all kinds of directions but the net or overall movement was from where they were high to where they're low. Now let's do that with the orange balls. Same thing. Now they'll move in a net way from an area where they were high in concentration to where they were low. And now both balls fill the available space. And now this time we're going to watch a graph and demonstrate these balls reaching equilibrium in this volume of space. So let's pick the blue balls first. And notice how quickly, because of this net movement, right, the overall movement is towards equilibrium. And we can graph that and see the movement from a high to a low concentration. And ultimately, those balls will hover, their movement will hover around the equilibrium line. Let's do the same for the orange balls now. Again, the overall movement is towards equilibrium, even though those orange balls are moving in a variety of directions, but they're moving from where they are high in concentration to where they're low, and we can see that in a graph. Ultimately, the distribution hovers around equilibrium. Let's reset it and watch it one more time. overall movement, both balls reaching equilibrium. So it is a net movement, right, because you can see that the graph goes up and down, sometimes it passes equilibrium, that blue ball actually hasn't come to equilibrium just yet. But now with time, we'll see equilibrium reached. Okay, let's do osmosis next.